Good morning. morning. I'm Preston. And I'm Krista. And this weekend we're visiting the Shenandoah Valley. And to kick it off, we're here at Lurie Caverns, which is the most popular and largest caverns in the eastern United States. Uh, really don't have that much planned. We're gonna do our best to soak in the views and nature and just take you along for the ride. So let's see what we get up to in this uh, spontaneous day trip out to a day weekend. No, weekend trip <laughs> out to I, the Shenandoah Valley. I'm excited. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, two one. one. All right, okay, here we go. Let's go into the caverns. Okay, okay. Another cool thing about this place is uh -huh. you can also do so many other things here. Like you can do rope Whoa. adventure and you can do the maze. But today, we're just here for the caverns. Just about to enter the caves and we're super pumped. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. It's also nice and cool in here. Yeah. On a summer day, it's quite nice. Wow. And the ceiling is glistening. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it's pretty good. So the stalactites come from the top and stalagmites come from the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Look above you. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Like giant spears. Don't want that falling on my head. This one is really close to your head here. <laughs> this formation sort of looks like a monster like that. Oh yeah, they look like eyes. Well, oh, that's scary. Okay. Yeah, it's really creepy. <laughs> any of these things at any given time can fall down. Oh my god. This place is completely self-guided. You have areas like these where you can listen to facts. And you can just walk at your own pace and enjoy. All right, so we were looking at these, and then you look closely, there's like white sap going down. Is that like blood or something? Are they bleeding, Kay? No. It looks like gravy. Looks like gravy. Where or, are the biscuits? Or glaze. <laughs> Don't glazing on You see stuff like this, it kind of looks like hair that's dripping. And then you look up, you have these spikes. Oh yeah, you see the different layers there, right? That's so beautiful. So beautiful. Water. Oh my gosh. Is that reflection? Wait. That's water. It's reflecting the ceiling. What is going on there? So all of this is water, and that's just a reflection from the slice that's on top. So this is all reflection. And it looks like it goes under the fudging ground. That's all water. But it looks like it goes underground. Looks like there are rocks underground there. But it's not. Just keeps on getting better, huh? Yeah. And it just keeps on falling. This is not reflection. This is just real. It just goes down. The only thing that would clue you in that that is not a reflection is when the water drops off of the stalactites. And then you see the ripples on the the water. It's such an optical illusion. Yeah, it's really insane. What is this white stuff, Kay? It is so crazy. So these stalactites are missing their points. Right? They're just all they're blunt. Someone gave it a haircut. <laughs> wow, look at the texture over here. Whoa, never seen, wow, first time seeing this kind of texture. Look at 
that small little guy right here. It's flat and wavy. Like pasta. Like pasta. <laughs> it's like a bridge or a cliff of all these spiky things. So these are called totem poles. There, another one there. I don't want to fall down there. That's what the aliens are. <laughs> Okay, what do you see? What do you see? Uh, those wavy fold type uh, rocks. It's called drapery, this formation. And this is the largest uh, grouping of them in the caverns. Wow. This and one? It's folded also. It has that drapery at the end. He got the fold, but this is the, the whitest one we've seen so far. It's like Marvel. layers of icing or frosting. It's like shiny with all the sap. This is called the fallen stalactite. The fallen stalactite was at one time attached by the right end to the open area and the ceiling above but a massive earthquake 7,000 years ago caused the formation to fall. The last such disturbance of this magnitude in the eastern region. That one fell over. Where is KK? There she is. I almost walked into it. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh, now we're going back down. All right, these are the totem poles again. So this is the stalactite. Stalactite, and then and it's going all the way to the ground. And if you go to the base on the left side, that's the stalagmite, which goes all goes all the way up. The ceiling. Wow. So this is known as the double column, and we're inside the giant's tavern, the giant's hall, which is the deepest part of these caverns. Did you hear that? Oh, we well, hear something. Yeah. We're in the <gasps> cathedral. We're in the cathedral and I see a, an organ. What the hell? There's an organ here, okay? Wow, what? It is considered the biggest instrument in the world. Yes, because it's hooked up to various different stalactites. Uh, in the caves, in the cavern system, about three and a half acres. You kind of, if you press the key, it sort of sends like an electrical signal that ignites the stalactites to emit a frequency, and then they have little speakers to pick it up and then distribute it here in the cavern, in the cathedral, so you can hear it. Pluto's chasm. So it's called Pluto's chasm because the discoverers thought I they reminded them of the uh, the Roman gods' realm, of the underworld, its eerie beauty. And this rock here looks like a T-Rex. His name is Gary Thomas. We're about to go into the wishing well, oh which is the deepest body of water in, in the here. Cavern. These are all coins. And from 1954 till 2017, $1.1 million were collected. Look right here. Wow. Oh, we have the iconic fried eggs. So Why are they called fried eggs? Because look at that. <laughs> they look like fried eggs. They were stalagmites that were accidentally chopped off when uh, the caverns, they were trying to enlarge the tunnel system. But now they're an iconic symbol. So if you're wondering what they look like when you chop one, they look like fried eggs. Stephens Avenue is the last area of the caverns named for one of the discoverers. It was Stephens who encouraged the others to join him in search for what the New York Herald described the discovery of the century. Okay, this is it. Alright, so KK saw this and she's like, if you look at it long enough, it kind of looks like a portal to another universe. Where does it lead, Kay? I have no idea. To Pluto's chasm, maybe? <laughs> there are plants here, look, the yeah. actual, there are a lot more plants. You got these fern, baby fern looking things, there's some over there. 
probably because there's enough oxygen up yeah. there. So they can and probably grow. Oxygen and water. All right, KK, one and a quarter miles and one hour later, what do you think? This is fantastic. What just, I, I don't, I'm lost for words. I'm still processing it, had no excitations, and one, was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Yeah. It's about $30 per person, and it's a little cool in there, so if you get cold easily, make sure you bring a sweater. A sweater, yeah, 54 degrees to be exact. But that was freaking amazing. It felt like we were in Mars, alien planet, mm -hmm. and now get on with the day, right? Yep. Let's do it.